He was pounding on our door about uh, 10.30 and said we needed to get out. Oh my God! And they'll be able to uh, regroup and go forward. Hurricane Irene dumps on the East Coast, creating powerful flooding and knocking out power to millions. All this happening ahead of a grim anniversary of another monster storm that's still affecting people six years later. Plus the long journey home, a penguin who lost his way and got really sick gets a lift back to the Arctic. And Lady Gaga certainly wasn't born this way. More on her mannish VMA behavior. And speaking of born, who announced she's going to be a mom? Your independent news network starts right now. I do want to underscore that the impacts of this storm will be felt for some time. And the recovery effort will last for weeks or longer. Power may be out for days in some areas. Irene may be gone, but the storm has left a lasting impression. The damage left behind is our big story tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Pickle. Welcome to INN News. From New England to North Carolina, Hurricane Irene has killed 24 people in six states, left more than four million in the dark, and a trail of damage estimated at three to five billion dollars. Tonight, we look at that damage from up and down the coast. We begin in the Big Apple, where a big mess was left behind, but not the kind of mess that was feared. This is video out of Brooklyn, and as you can see, trees are down everywhere. Some of the low-lying areas of New York did flood. Here's an example of this video from the Meatpacking District, but the waters did quickly recede. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg is defending his response to that storm. What would you say to people who are saying that the response was overblown? You know, they should just look in a mirror. They are alive today, whether because of it, in spite of it. We're just not going to take any risk with people's lives. And um, the best scenario possible is you take the precautions, and it turns out they're not needed. The mayor ordered a mandatory evacuation of hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers from some low-lying areas and shut down the city's mass transit system over the weekend. Now, while the Big Apple itself was spared from Irene's worst, other parts of New York State look like this. As you can see, Margaretville was hit hard by flooding from Irene. Streets in the Catskill Mountains were turned into virtual rivers like this. We head across the river to New Jersey, still dealing with flooding today. This is video of the Trenton Transit Center, where the tracks are underwater. Several inland rivers and creeks are above flood stage and continue to rise today. One woman in New Jersey died when her car was swept away by floodwaters. Despite being bordered on all sides by land, fast-moving floodwaters swarm towns in Vermont. This building is dangerously close to falling after a nearby brook tripled its width. The soaking rain and rising water forced some to leave their homes with little warning. He came pounding on our door about uh, 10.30 and said we needed to get out, that the river was cresting going over the banks. As soon as we looked out, it was just, it was utter mayhem down the street. Oh my God! Vermont also lost a little bit of its history. You're watching one of the state's fabled covered bridges get washed away. That bridge had spanned the Williams River since around 1870. The state emergency management spokesman says water is pretty much everywhere. Nothing to cheer about here in Boston outside the famous bar that inspired the sitcom Cheers. Trees came down as Hurricane Irene blew through. This video shows crews working to remove the downed limbs from the street near the bar. It does not appear there was any damage to the iconic hangout. Irene hit first and hardest in North Carolina. Winds were still more than 100 miles an hour when it landed there Saturday. At least six people died there. Take a look at the damage. This is now a road to nowhere. Irene tore apart what was once Highway 12 on Hatteras Island. The only way in now is by boat. These homes, made famous from the movie Nights in Rodanthe, managed to escape the storm's wrath. But just a few streets away, a million dollar home was reduced to cinders. You see people who have built their lifetime dream lose it, but the good news is they're alive and they'll be able to uh, regroup and go forward. More than 1,000 people remain in shelters and tens of thousands are still without power in that state. Now, as the Northeast cleans up from Irene, people in the Gulf are marking the sixth anniversary of Hurricane Katrina's landfall. The force of that hurricane wiped out entire communities in the region. Then the levees broke in New Orleans, setting off catastrophic flooding. 
Thousands of displaced families sought shelter at the Superdome. More than 1,700 people were killed in that storm. The Federal Emergency Management Agency called Katrina the single most catastrophic natural disaster in U.S. history. Time for Global News Now. A deadly typhoon has made landfall in Taiwan, bringing heavy rains and winds of more than 100 miles per hour. Authorities called in 26,000 fishing vessels to harbor last night as the weather reports worsened. The storm is blamed for seven deaths and landslides in the Philippines. Rescuers are racing to save coal miners still trapped in a coal mine in northeastern China. Three of the 26 miners initially stuck underground were rescued Saturday and one has died. The workers got trapped last week when they accidentally drilled into a deserted mine filled with water. Rescue crews have been pumping water out of the pit. They've also been drilling holes to get food and fresh air to the miners. The Libyan rebels have freed more than 10,000 people in prison by Muammar Gaddafi's government since they took the country's capital, Tripoli, last week. There are still some 50,000 prisoners missing. The National Transitional Council has set up an investigation team to locate them. The voyage home has begun for the penguin that's won hearts all around the world. The emperor penguin known as Happy Feet took off today on research vessel from New Zealand. Happy Feet was found in June far from his Antarctic feeding grounds. He was transferred to the Wellington Zoo after becoming sick from eating sand, which he had likely mistook for snow. He's all better now and on his way, that trip will take four days. This won't be the last we see of him though. His progress will be monitored with a GPS tracking device. And that's your Global News Now. Lady Gaga was no lady at the VMAs last night. The star drank and smoked while dressed as a man most of the night. She even almost kissed Britney Spears on stage while handing her the Michael Jackson Vanguard Award. Spears politely declined that kiss. More than once on Twitter, Gaga was compared to Ralph Macchio. It was actually Beyonce who stole the show. She ended her song Love on Top performance by unbuttoning her jacket to reveal newly announced baby bump. She actually gave the news up on the red carpet prior to the show. This will be the singer's first baby with rap icon Jay-Z. Well, if you're having salmon for dinner tonight, we have a warning for you. Plus, Hurricane Irene caused rivers to rise, but not necessarily gas prices. We'll tell you why. And they are creepy, and soon they'll be looking to get in out of the cold. They're bats. Uh, you can keep them from inviting themselves into your home. Well, our world appears to be shrinking, and so are apartments, apparently. One man's really small space and how he makes it work. Coming up on INN.